let's take a look and see who our guests are on the show tonight. He is an award-winning actor and New York Times best-selling author. He sings. He is the multi, the multi-talented, the mighty. David Duchovny is here tonight. There he is. How are you, David? I'm great, James. How are you? I am very, very well. It's nice to see you. I'm going to come see you. I'm going to come soon. What, very down soon. here? Yeah, I'm going to come down there. Only if you've got the time. You I don't, do. don't feel I do. you I'm have to. I'm going to do for you. We'll, we'll run a clip you. of the bubble. You don't have to come down no, here. No, are you sure? I'm for you, I'm I there. I can come to you. No, don't come to me. I'll come to you. Do you want, it, do you want me to order anything in? Are you good? Um, I'll text you. Text me, let me know. David DeCobney, everybody! <laughs> and he's an Emmy and Tony nominated actor you know from The Wire, Orange is the New Black, American Gods, and so much more. The phenomenal Pablo Schreiber is here tonight. <laughs> Pablo, how are you? I'm good. I'm just eating some of your vegetables, James. Are you eating? Well, they're not my vegetables. They're our vegetables, yeah. They have your name on it. I saw you earlier, Pablo, yes. and I didn't recognize you because you had these little, like, pads under your eyes. Trade secrets, James. Why are you telling everybody about that? I don't think it's a trade secret. I think it's a good thing. Okay. What are the little, like, snail juice eye serum things? Snail juice. It's true. Well, let's have a look at the eyes. Bring them closer. Let's see if it's made a great. Oh, my God. I'm looking at two pools in the ocean. We love you. Pablo Schreiber, everybody. <laughs> and she's a multi platinum selling and chart-topping singer, songwriter and musician. Her latest single, Ever Gone, is out right now. It's absolutely beautiful. Please welcome the dazzling, the divine, Christina Perry is here tonight. <laughs> hey, you know that's you shall tell you the song I love of yours, Char of Hearts. Yeah. Char, that song got me through so much heartache. Thank you. Me too. It's did it. Yeah. Who did you write it about? I mean, I feel like everybody knows. I just call him Jar. I've changed his name from what it actually is to Jar. That song is so beautiful. It's gorgeous. Thank you. And we're so happy you're here. And I love the new song. And I can't wait to Thank hear it later. You. Christina Perry, everybody. <laughs> Who do you think you are? When I'm around raving scars. <laughs> do you not remember that? It's all about. It's all about. Just it was a song that's just like. You <laughs> breaking my heart like this. No. Collecting your jar of hearts. Oh my God. When did that it... was an entire summer for me. <laughs> yeah, my man up there. My man up there. In a... Look at him. Yes. 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 It's me and you, brother. Me and you. What's your name? Jay. Jay? Yeah. J A Y. J A Y. Just like Love. that. Yeah. Hey, no J, no pay. That's what I say. That's right. Love that. <laughs> Love that. Me and you collecting a jar of hearts. Who do you think you are? Yeah, all right, that, so how'd that go? Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, go on, Jay. Go on. Give it to us. Wait. Go on. Give it to us. Go on. Go. Thank you. No, go I'm on. good. Take it off. Jay, Jay. <laughs> all Jay, I heard think. All I, all I heard Who sing for us. Who do you think you are? Collecting your jar of hearts. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's that time. It's time for the news. The news. Today, Senator Susan Collins announced that she will vote to confirm Katanji Brown Jackson becoming the first Republican senator to back President Biden's Supreme Court nominee. She's the first Republican to support Biden's pick, but she won't be the last. OK, it's absolutely possible that she is the last. <laughs> Susan Collins basically sounds like the name of everyone in my mum's book club. <laughs> Jackson's confirmation had been virtually assured, but Collins' support means her confirmation will be bipartisan. Is this real bipartisanship? Do you know what I mean? Or is Susan Collins just the last person to say yes to a plan in the group text? <laughs> you know what I mean? You're no hero, Susan. We're going to Chili's with or without you. <laughs> In other news, 21 states are now suing the Biden administration to end the federal travel mask mandate. You know what this means? We're going to have to duct tape 21 states to their seats. <laughs> Here's my question. People are really angry about this. Who are the people out there that want to see strangers' mouths so badly while they're traveling? <laughs> 21 states have filed lawsuits, but suing the administration seems like a lot to me when all you have to do to get around the mask mandate is just nurse a Diet Coke for the entire flight. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm still working on this, so I'll... You know, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Who do you have, if you ever had a flight where you're sat next to someone awful or an awful flight with people around you? Sometimes you sit next to someone and they find out you're a stand-up comedian 
And then all of a sudden they start telling you all these weird esoteric stories from their life. Right. Where they're like, you can put that in your act. You know what I mean? They're like, my uncle went on elk hunting with his friend and his friend disappeared and they couldn't ever find him. And now his wife married his cousin and you can put that in your act. And you're like, <laughs> like I think that, I, th I think you just, I think it's a murder you just described. <laughs> I was once on a flight. I was in there. It was in 2000. I don't know why I always remember it was true, but it was in 2000. And I was flying on my own from uh, London to LA. I had a quick turnaround and then LA to Sydney. So basically 24 hours in the air. The London leg gets slightly delayed. There's a whole nightmare where they said that your bags would get taken directly onto the plane. They didn't. You had to go and pick them up. I thought I was going to miss the flight. I got there. It was a whole stress, the entire thing. And anyway, I get on the plane, and I'm sat in the middle seat, and a guy sits down next to me, and he had a, he had a huge... I can only describe as a huge bag of almonds, right? <laughs> huge. And he sits down next to me, and I'm like this. I was bummed I was in the middle seat. The whole thing had been too stressful. And uh, I had my headphones around my neck here and an eye mask on my head like that. And he sat, and as I'm sat down, I could see him walking towards me, chomping his almonds, and he went like this. He went, I promise you this is true. He went, hey, Rumi. <laughs> All right? And he puts his stuff up in the thing. He sits down, boom, with like real there, and he sat here, and he goes, long flight. And I go, mmm. And he goes, here's, what I, here's, here's a plan. I choose three topics. You choose three topics, <laughs> and we'll talk our way all the way down under. <laughs> and I looked at him, and I just went like this. <laughs> that was it. I thought, I can't even engage here. Here's the news this morning. NASA astronaut Mark van der Heij returned to Earth after spending 355 days on the International Space Station, setting the record for the longest US space flight. He was like, I'm sure I didn't miss much, you know, as long as Biden has high approval ratings, gas is $3 a gallon, and Will Smith is still universally beloved. I think I'm good. <laughs> Can I be honest? I'm, done. I'm over space now. <laughs> I'm just done with it. I'm done talking about it. Everyone's got like, I'm just over it. Elon Musk going, Bezos going, Branson's going, Pete Davidson's not going. I'm just out. <laughs> I'm out on space and it's not even happened. I'm done with it. I'm bored of it. It's like someone telling me they're going to Tulum. <laughs> sure, keep it to yourself. Get over it. Do you know what I mean? You want to impress me, spend 355 days in a Panera bread. <laughs> That's impressive. That's impressive. I feel like we need a new term for broke the record. Because broke the record for the longest space flight isn't the same as broke the record for most snails on your face. And that's real. Here's a picture of it. <laughs> Both of those guys can call themselves record breakers. <laughs> but they're not the same thing. There should be different fonts in the world record book. <laughs> she was like, longest space flight. Snails on your face. <laughs> Here's a story. According to a recent study, <laughs> six in ten workers have quit their job because their office wasn't pet friendly. The other four are in a stable romantic relationship and don't need to fill the void by catering their life to a pet. <laughs> don't get any ideas about this. We talked about this, Louis, okay? A shoulder parrot is not appropriate in a TV studio. <laughs> Has anyone here bought their pet to work? J Jared, you bought your pet. What was that? I brought, he's like a 60 pound sheepdog. I brought him. He all over the roof. <laughs> but, uh, How did I miss that? Your dog coming in. Uh, is it a Friday? Yeah, it was a Friday. A Friday. Yeah. That would explain it. <laughs> I think we should organize a day where everyone brings their pets to a tape. I'd like that. <laughs> That'll bring your pet day. Oh, Nate's got his hand up. Nate, what's up? It's, uh, it's not allowed anymore. They used to allow pets at, at CBS. But they they sent an email out. It was when? Years, when was the email? It was a few. It was pre-COVID, so it was probably like three years ago. Right. Because uh, someone's dog, very large dog, Jared, um, uh, took a <laughs> in the elevator and, <laughs> and and left there. <laughs> so Is that no the more reason? no more pets at CBS anymore. That's it. Hang on, Lawrence. Lawrence piping in. What, what's up, Lauren? It was a celebrity's dog. Oh, was it really? It was No. Yeah. No, it wasn't. Yeah. 
This dog took a <laughs> in and, the and because of that, we can't have dogs in the office. Yeah. So there's no way around this, Nick. We can't have a bring your pet to work day. I know, it feels like we got to bring back to talk to somebody and do an apology or something. I think he could he could get around that easy, easily. Because these are people, when you walk down that corridor in the basement, you can tell these are people who clearly care about the aesthetic <laughs> of this <building. laughs> That corridor uh, from the ground, from the, from the parking lot God. to the lift was so drab. And then for ages, all of us were like, oh, they're doing it up. They're repainting it. And somehow, <laughs> somehow they managed to make it worse. <laughs> Go on, Dave. Sent me a photo when they repainted it. I thought it was a black and white photo. Yeah. It's like the horror is so gray. It's such yeah. a bizarre color to choose. Oh. It's so weird. It's so, it's so strange. I was like so excited. I was like, oh, cool, new pictures. Because it used to be like these colorful, remember the stuff that we used to do in the past or whatever. Yeah. And now it's just like, ah, television. It was a, it was a good time while it lasted. <laughs> Absolutely right. And then, for some reason, there's loads of pictures of just what CBS looked like in the in the 50s. Yeah. And then Empty. just a photo of me. Yes. <laughs> at the end. Looking so depressed. Yes. <laughs> it's like I'm literally like this. It's a photo of me like this. <laughs> <laughs> and did everybody hear about this? British customers and retailers are being told to be on the lookout for fake chocolate, because someone in the UK is apparently selling counterfeit Wonka bars. <laughs> fake Wonka bars, or as I call it, still chocolate. <laughs> they warn the fake Wonka bars are being made by unregistered businesses that may not follow food hygiene laws. Hygiene laws. Last I remember, Willy Wonka's factory, a kid fell in a chocolate river. <laughs> And they just kept right on like it was business as usual. There is no worse hygiene than the Wonka factory. I'm sorry. In a world where we talk about things that may or may not be problematic in movies, they couldn't care less <laughs> about Augustus Gloop. He goes in that river and they don't give a <laughs> They're just like, what do you get when you gobble down street? It's like... A child. It's a child. It's a child in the river. He went up a tube. He got sucked up a tube. <laughs> Gone. Yeah. Another one, ice cream. Whoa! Yeah. Like, Mike TV got like shrunk and put in a TV. It's disgusting what they did to children there. <laughs> disgusting. They were gonna let Charlie Buckets chop himself in half in that fizzy lifting drink like silo. That's right. They didn't give a <laughs> No. And they had to burp their way down. Yeah. It's disgusting. 30 seconds later, they're licking acid off the walls. That place is crazy. I heard something so different. <laughs> I heard something so different. I was like, I don't remember that bit. <laughs> and finally, Dyson announced today that they're getting into the headphone business. This fall, they'll be releasing a pair of noise-canceling Bluetooth headphones with a built-in air purifier. Here it is here. Luckily, between the sound of the music and the sound of the air purifier, you won't hear everybody talking about how insane you look. <laughs> the product... Look at it again, look at that. The product is called The Zone. It's a clever mashup of zero friends and alone. <laughs> but the... How long, how long before Reggie Watts walks into the building with that on? You'll buy them, right? Send it to me. You'll buy them, right? I'll wear it. They are great for cancelling out noise pollution, air pollution, and, of course, defeating Batman. <laughs> That's the news. We'll be right back. Well, we'll be right back. And as you're pleased to know that there is no tambourine today, unfortunately. Uh, I guess it was taken away from me. That's unfortunate. Check that picture out.